Hi all, welcome to Show Studios Live Review Series. I'm Show Studio Fashion Editor Georgie Evans and I'm going to be rounding up Pitti and Milan for you today, autumn into 20. We're talking about the Italians. The um, overarching theme of the two of cities um, was very much this m giant move to sartorialism. So obviously what happens with Mento is we get a lot of tailoring, a lot of sartorialism, moving much more into the sharp suiting and wonderful lines and cuts. Um, and that can be expected, but I think with the new decade, a lot of brands are starting to look away from that sportswear, streetswear, um, which now feel like dirty words as I say them, um, that kind of aesthetic and really, really moving into what masculinity and menswear means now. Now that we're trying to move away from that, what does that mean? Um, and for some designers, they've decided to look into the man. Who is this man and what does he do? How can we tailor our collections towards him? So, for example, Prada was looking at the anti-heroes, that you're kind of every man that's often and perhaps too too many times overlooked. So um, very, very beautiful clothes that harked back to Prada's archive, the real house codes coming through in the collections, lots of wonderful graphic prints, and um, some almost 80s stylings that I've seen um, in previous Prada collections. And as the models walked in the finale, they were all walking as if it was rush hour at a very busy city. Um, so looking towards the everyman, celebrating Every, the everyman masculinity, which is a really wonderful thing and very proud of, I must say. Um, then we have Xenia, who's celebrating um, the artist, the craftsman, which is something they did last season, but this season looking at um, what an artist, how an artist might want to dress and really honing in on that beautiful sartorial streak. Xenia was one of the better collections of Milan, um, really fantastic, interesting cuts on suiting, and just when you think um, kind of it's all been done before um, because then you will create a really odd angle to button up suit or a really fantastic texture um, and I was really pleased to see that. Also looking at kind of masculinity and menswear was a cold wall as well and they were looking at, he was looking at the well-travelled um, the well-travelled man and where, where, what job do they have once they've landed? Are they the architect? Are they a creative? Are they um, an artist? Um, are they a sculptor, are they a painter? So what would they wear? What's their uniform? And for a cold wall, it was very trim. A complete change away from the streetwear. I know he hates that word, so I'm sorry to be using it. Um, for a sport, sportier aesthetic that we've come to know a cold wall for. And in this case, it's going to be a real shock for the consumer because it's a real different aesthetic coming out of a cold wall this season. And I think in part that is being in uh, Italy. Um, in general, Italy has influenced a lot of designers who don't normally um, show, for example, in Pitti, we had a little bit of more um, refined um, attitude at Telfar. Um, even Jill Sander was um, much sharper. Um, and so a lot of brands are looking at this like, who is this working man? Who is the everyday man? And how can we cater to him? Because we've been catering to this slightly millennial um, sportswear comfort. And now it's about um, not necessarily going far on the other end and taking it back to almost Savile Row level tailoring, but what's that middle ground? How do we find that for this new decade? Ferragamo also arguably one of the most looking at different um, types of men and the workforce. He was really looking, so Paul Andrews really looking at heroes and anti-heroes and um, this, this almost, almost the everyday man, but a little bit elevated. So uh, James Bond-esque everyday man, a man who can do everything. So he, on his mood board, he had wonderful old Life magazine covers um, with Sean Connery on them. And um, kind of deep sea divers from the 70s, pilots with that slight Top Gun aesthetic, um, sailors, and all those kind of typical tropes of masculinity, but, um, but done through a really brilliant Ferragamo lens. And, and his version of kind of moving away from sportswear was adjusting things, creating things that are adjustable in themselves for the man who one minute could be jumping on a plane, one minute could be saving a damsel in distress. Um, so the trousers were Velcroed, lots of different um, stylings, the waistcoats as well could be Velcroed. Um, some designers decided to look completely opposite. So rather than looking at the workforce, looking at the, that idea of masculinity, they were looking at escapism, pleasure seekers, Telfar arguably, um, we were in the setting of the aftermath of a beautiful dinner party um, and I don't necessarily think Telfar was looking at escapism but you kind of feel like there's a power in, the, uh, in what Telfar does and that in itself I think um, can be a little bit of escapism. Um, also looking at escapism in a big way was Marnie um, who was kind of referencing the Prince of Prospero um, who's known for being a pleasure seeker in times of trouble. Um, and he, all of his models were dancing and moving in a beautiful choreographed presentation. 
and the clothes themselves were distressed and loved and worn and I think Marnie was actually one of the standouts of the collection. Um, also looking at pleasure seeking in a slightly different way was Random Identities who showed at Pity. Um, there was a real club vibe in this collection, lots of smoke and lights as the models pounded. Great casting in that collection, great casting in Telfar, great casting in Pity overall actually. Um, and again in Marnie. Something to be picked up on Marnie was the shoes, which we've been noticing quite a lot over these collections, is that a lot of people are trying to move away from trainers in that kind of sports wear vein. And when you're looking to not be not look at trainers, what do you do? A lot of people are kind of segueing back into the Oxford and Brogue that we know and love. But a lot of people are trying to move into something a little bit more unorthodox. So at Marnie, in keeping with the dance and the rave and the escapism, we had ballet pumps on um, on male models, which I love. So it was really brilliant. And again, those really chunky boots, which we've seen, seen quite a lot recently. I think it was partly inspired by Bottega Veneta. And that kind of trend's been running over. So the really chunky boots we saw at Marni, saw a lot of chunky boots at Xenia, and again at Faragamo, obviously being a shoe brand, those were really key. Um, so aside from chunky boots, we had these slightly effeminate ballet shoes. And at Gucci, which was just this morning, or this afternoon, um, we saw kind of Mary Jane's um, on men's wear, really beautiful kind of cut out Mary Jane shoes, harking back to the shoes you'd wear as a child to school. And um, again at Sine as well, really soft, kind of almost sock shoes, um, which are really interesting to take for Sine, who are known for stomping great platform shoes, which you did get with the women's, but for the men's, really beautiful rounded soft shoes. Um, again, also with the Cold War, scuba shoes um, made in rubber, rubber vulcanised rubber. Um, and again, chunky boots. So definitely noticing an interesting trend on the shoes there. Alongside this escapism and the pleasure seeking and the exploration of masculinity, we had this eye re-evaluating of masculinity. What does that mean? Um, does it need to be the kind of typical tropes that we've seen before? Um, and no, it doesn't need to be. So Gucci was um, exploring the idea of toxic masculinity. They like returned to the men's wear schedule, which is really interesting. Um, separated the gender start again, showing um, once more as just menswear um, and really trying to avoid that toxic masculinity, those tropes, those stereotypes. How do we escape from those? And uh, Alessandro McKelly's idea was to go back and look at childhood when things were pure, less, um, less conforming to society's rules of what masculinity should be and kind of celebrating the idea of masculinity through these wonderful childish tropes. And he said childlike shouldn't be used as a negative word anymore, it should be fun and celebratory. And childlike was always a kind of derogatory, and if you weren't filling those masculine tropes, um, you were perhaps perceived in a derogatory manner. So, really, really interesting that all these different designers are looking at different um, elements of masculinity this season and trying to carve out what that means for their brand. Um, interestingly, quite a lot of collaborations this, um, this season. Gucci, who I just mentioned, um, worked with Richard Hell, the musician, on t-shirts from his book and also Liberty London on wonderful ditzy prints, um, mostly because the word liberty means liberta, which means freedom in Italian and his collection was mostly about kind of freedom. Um, who else collaborated? MSGM collaborated with Dario Argento, which was fantastic getting into a much more sombre collection. MSGM is known for wonderful brights, having a whale of a time, lots of kind of neon pops of yellow and red, but this collection was much more subdued in a collaboration with Dario Argento. They had a um, QR code that came alive through a virtual reality, augmented reality, um, which had eyes spinning out of it, much like Suspiria. Um, we also had a collaboration in Xenia with Leica, the camera, so lots of camera bags and really interesting um, different shapes and accessories there and Telfar and Gap. So this is really interesting. Telfar did a collaboration with Gap, which is launching, I believe, in Paris in the next couple of days. Um, but we spotted a little bit of it on Pity, which was really fantastic. So Telfar is always known for being a fantastic collaborator um, with different brands. But really interesting to see them collaborate with the powerhouse that is Gap. So watch this space um, for our Paris reviews. We'll be seeing a lot more. Thank you guys very much for watching and on to Paris.